Hello everyone, uh, I'm Trumpet Imp Cool. Um, I just wanted to let you know um, that as Christians, a lot of times we will take scripture and phrases um, that sound nice and sound well-meaning, but are not um, taken in its proper context to be used in what the author or what God intended. So um, it is my goal to look over these uh, these passages and try and go through the scripture and see what, um, what was really meant by it. So that when you um, have conversations with other Christians, or if you are a non-Christian and you are really interested in what the Bible actually says about it. Um, I plan to go over those and we'll see what, see what we uncover. Um, so for today, we're going to be going over, um, a passage that I feel a lot of Christians use when other Christians or other people are going through hard times when they experience loss, a severe loss. And, um, they'll say to them, you know, God will only, um, only give, uh, what you can handle. And, um, God, you know, God won't give you more than you can handle. So if, um, I, I feel like the, it's well-intentioned, but when someone is going through something that they feel like they can't handle this, that is more than they can bear. Um, whether it is um, loss of a family member or, uh, you know, sexual abuse or um, there's just like extreme examples that people go through that are, um, you know, I, I, I don't think that that passage really helps in those times. Yeah, um, that's awesome, Jesus. Jesus saved Justin. And he says, when I experienced loss, I praised the Lord. Just like Job praised the Lord when his house collapsed and all his kids died. Yes. Um, so I kind of wanted to um, impart on you that saying um, God won't, won't give you more than you can handle. Um, I feel like it is a very um, negative approach to the situation. So with that in mind, uh, I want to go into what scripture says um, and like where this probably came from. So um, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians 10. Um, chapter verse is here. Perfect. <laughs> um Okay, so in 1 Corinthians 10, um, I, will, I will go over the scripture that probably people are referencing and then how it's being taken out of context. So it says, No temptation has uh, overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able uh, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Um, so, um, now this is Paul talking to the Corinthians, uh, the, to the church at Corinth. And uh, I just kind of want to give you some, some context with this passage. At the beginning of the chapter, Paul is saying, Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware that all your, that all our fathers, um, and then he lists things that kind of gives like a history lesson. So if you want to read through this, um, you can. Um, but later on, he says, now all these things happened to them as examples. Um, and they were written for our admonition or instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. 
Therefore, so now we're taking all of these things, um, nor less let us commit sexual immorality, um, and do not become idolaters. So these are things that they were tempted by. Uh, nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted. So these are things that they've been tempted by. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. So those who think that they are able to withstand temptation, um, you will be tempted. Uh, so I, I think Paul is making, making clear that we all will be tempted. But um, it makes a promise that no temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. So these temptations that you deal with um, are common to man. This is not something that surprises God. There's not a temptation out there that God is um, surprised by. So it's kind of like we are all going through these temptations. Um, but God is faithful. Um, so I want to kind of go dive deeper into God is faithful. Um, and I do want to point out that this is not anything like, as you can see, just based off of context, that this passage is not really talking about what we can bear. Um, but it's more about what we are tempted by. So I just wanted to underline that. Um, so it says, um, God is faithful. So this is Paul, right? Paul has scriptures. He's very well versed in scripture. And he has things like Deuteronomy 7, um, 9 that says, Therefore know that the Lord our God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. Um, he also has Psalm 36. Your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reach, reaches to the clouds. Um, so when we're talking about God is faithful. Um, and even in Lamentations 3. Uh, I mean, this is just so good. <laughs> um, but later on, he says, um, Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are not, they are new every morning. Um, great is your faithfulness. Um, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. So, um, so with these passages, this is, um, this is kind of what he's driving at. Um, so, but God is faithful, um, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able. Um, but with the temptation, so even if you feel like it's, if it's too great of a temptation, um, he will ma also make a way of escape uh, that you may be able to bear it. Uh, or endure it, I believe. Yeah, endure it. Now, um, I wanted to let you know. Um, I know this is like... We're already away from this topic of God won't, won't give you more than you can handle, right? But I wanted to describe what's, what's being said here. Um, so... I, I looked it up and it says that that the you in here is singular. No temptation has overtaken you. So we're talking, like these things are talking about what you go through. But when you look at the you right here, um, who will not allow you to be tempted, uh, um, it's a, let's see, it is a plural you. Let's see, just want to make sure I get this right. It will not allow you to be tempted. Um, so yeah, this is a plural you. So it's not something that we have to go through alone. Um, it is really important and essential that we go um, through this together as a community. 
um, when we are tempted, um, just imagine uh, being able to um, go to one of your friends instead of going to the sin. Um, like we are able to do these things um, that by provide being provided a way of escape. So um, I think that's really powerful. Yes, accountability is so helpful. So the, this is really like a, a really clear passage that, that's that's in a favor of, of accountability. Um, so keeping each other accountable and um, so yeah, that's what this passage is talking about. So it has nothing to do with trials and things that you're going through. There is one passage that God does talk about this. Um, so these are two passages that y'all can remember. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, and then 2 Corinthians. So this is the second letter to Corinth. Um, so now just imagine Paul. Paul is a... Um, he is on fire for God, and he is... Um, he knows all of his scriptures. He knows, um, like he is, he was like a super Jew. <laughs> he, he knew everything. He had all of this wisdom. Uh, but here in his letter, talking about suffering, um, talks about how we're be to be comforted, um, and, um, that who comforts okay blessed be the the god and father of our lord jesus christ the father of mercies and god of all comfort who comforts us in our all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who who are in any trouble with the comfort with which our we ourselves are comforted by god so we are able to have comfort through god um, but he wanted to make sure we understood where he's coming from says, for we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia. So this is a, a time that Paul was brought low. Um, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even, that we despaired even of life. So this is beyond what they could handle. Um, this was a trial that was beyond what Paul could handle. Uh, yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves. So death was like the next choice. So it's like, all right, well, we've suffered enough. Like death is like right around the corner. <laughs> um, and yes, we had that death, the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God. So they were at such a low that they were able to turn around in themselves that they are not going, that Paul has all of this wisdom that he, you know, he's able to rely on his knowledge of God and all of these things and how to live a good life. Um, but in this moment, he he, he found that he couldn't trust himself. He could only trust in God. Um, because God is the one who has the power to raise the dead. Um, who delivered... Now this next, next passage, uh, verse 10, is pretty cool. Um, it says... Uh, John John says, wow, that's so good. I feel like I'm really getting verse 9 right now. Yeah. Um, no, oh, it's, it's so interesting how we, um, how God, you know, sometimes he uses these things, um, in order that we de develop a closer and deeper relationship with God. I know that in my divorce, I didn't, um, I had two options. I could be mad at God and I could go away from him. Like, why did this happen? But it was in that moment that I was able to 
truly understand that I couldn't rely on myself anymore because I had made, <laughs> um, I had gotten myself in a mess, but I knew that God, um, I knew that God had the power to change the situation. So I, I put my trust in him. Um, so who delivered us from so great a death? Um, so that's me, uh, delivered us from such a great death and does deliver us. So currently is delivering us and whom we trust that he will still deliver us. So past, present and future, um, God will deliver you. Uh, you also helping together in prayer for us that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the, the gift granted to us through many. So, I mean, like, yeah, he's, he's like saying you also helping together in prayer for us. So while they were praying for them, like here's another testament to God using prayer. Uh, and, uh, like we were talking about in first Corinthians 10, like it is so powerful for us to, to pray and to be in, um, community with each other so that we are able to, um, with God's help, um, we are able to get through things that we are not able to, um, bear that we're not able to handle physically. So, um, Even Jesus talked about this. Um, uh, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So Jesus here acknowledges that we will be going through trials and tribulation, things that we can't handle. Um, but he reminds us that we have him who has overcome the world. So, um, so it's through Jesus that we are able to, um, get through these situations. Um, and I wish we can get away from using God won't give you more than you can handle because it is not what scripture says. Scripture says that we will, we will have tribulation. But God says, this is not anything that I can't handle. Put your trust in me. Stop putting your trust in assuming that things will go right. Um, the life of a Christian is not an easy one. But we are able to walk alongside others. We are able to walk alongside Jesus. And this is not something that he has not handled before. Um, so... I just wanted to encourage you that you are not alone. You do not have to do this alone. Um, I've said this many times, but my DMs, my messages are always open. You just have to message me. Um, I am on um, I am on a, <laughs> I tried to remember if the command was right. Um, <clears throat> I am on a, a discord where if you need someone to reach out to, to talk and pray for you, uh, you'll find me there. So with that, um, I just wanted to let you know that you are, you are valuable and, um, you don't have to do this alone.